What up, B-Squad? It is your boy, JB, and we are here today, you guys, with a brand new review for Life at the Lock of You Guys, Season 5, Episode 46. The episode was titled Love Bombs, you guys. Now, before we do get into it, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and um, you guys aren't subscribed yet, then I need you guys to do me a solid favor and stop taking me out on this date, have me pay for it at the end of it. And with that out of the way, you guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this episode of Love at the Lockup, shall we? All right, you guys, so we will start off with a couple who I can't stand the most, Bianca and Daniel. So in this episode, we find out that Daniel got a job. Daniel's going to be working for a moving company. So congratulations to Daniel, you know, doing good for himself, right? I think at this point Daniel has been out of prison for a full month so congratulations Daniel then we get Bianca <laughs> you guys when it comes to Bianca she gets on my nerves she is my like when I tell you guys something about that little girl that just grates my spirit anytime I see her come across my screen it's just like fuck what is she doing here right so she is complaining per usual. So this time she's complaining about having to drive him to work. I was like, girl, the man has a job. What are you complaining about? Take him to work. It's not that big of a deal. He has income coming in. You don't. I'm talking about that in a minute, right? Because she says for the last month, she's been driving him around and paying for things. Well, once again, he had just gotten out of prison. He ain't got no license, ain't got no car. What you expect for him to do? Granted, he could take a bus. Granted, he can take um, an Uber, right? He could. But you ain't doing nothing. You ain't got a job. You are living off of this settlement money. And we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. We're going to talk about that in just a minute, right? So she does take him to work. And she's talking about now she can just have some time to herself. I was like, okay. So <laughs> it's just something about that girl that gets, gets, like I said, irritates me, gets on my nerves, right? So we see her as she went to, I don't know what kind of, I think that it looked like a, you know, a game, you know, like um, like a game, game stop or something like that, right? And so her friend called her. And she answered the phone, talked to her friend Haley, and complaining about Daniel making Daniel the problem. I'm like, uh, no, ma'am, you're the problem, not Daniel. Like, you are the problem in this entire relationship. It's you, not him. But you're going to sit here and make him out to be the bad guy. Now, is he perfect? No, but you need to take some accountability for yourself. Then you're talking about he love bombs you and you think he's just using you. Again, you dumb fool. You the one who made all these decisions. You made the decision to leave Florida, go be in Arizona with him in his apartment. And you ain't got a job. He ain't got a job. He just got out of prison. What did you expect from this man? Like, really, Bianca? Can't, oh, God, this little girl gets on my last damn nerves. So we see Daniel as he went to his job, like I said. So he got he's working for a moving company. I think Daniel said that he's working part-time and, and it pays 20 an hour. I was like, that's 20 an hour part-time? I mean, I don't know too many people who make that money part-time. But congratulations. I mean, part-time, so that means you only get him probably 20 hours a week. Maybe less than that. But I mean, hey, it's a start. You can't, you can't knock it, right? And the guy that he's working with, this man has also been in prison as well. So, you know, he wants to, you know, help Daniel. And I'm here for that. I'm here for that. I'm here for that. I'm here for that, right? So as Daniel is finishing up with work, he calls Bianca to come pick him up. But she ignored the phone call. I was like, of course you would ignore the phone call. Like, you ain't doing the problem with Bianca is you ain't doing shit. I can see it if you were working, but you're not. And you are com sitting here 
complaining, complaining, complaining. It's like, girl, please get Bianca off my television screen. Please get Bianca off of my television screen. That's all I ask, We TV. I don't ask for a whole lot, but that is the one thing that I want from y'all to do. Get her off of the television screen. Now, we do know that life after, not life after, love after lockup, not love after, love during lockup, that premieres in December. We got a whole batch, whole new batch of people. I'm looking forward to it because I'm not, I'm so sick of Bianca. So then Bianca bought something from this store and it was $136. I was like, girl, what did you buy? What is that? $136. Now see, here's the thing. For me, it wouldn't be a problem because I have my main job. I have a side hustle and I have YouTube where I make money. But she, again, she is living off of this settlement. I'm like, are you dumb or are you dumb? Like you're spending from, and she's like, she got to, she just, you know, she can live off of for, live off of their settlement for a while. I was like, I beg to differ. I beg to differ because you're spending and spending and spending. If you're not replenishing what you're spending, then you just decreasing what's in your account. Like, do you know common sense? You know what? Shut up. So Daniel got home. He took an Uber. And he was talking about it's, it's expensive to take it, right? She doesn't care because she just wants some time to herself and she doesn't want to drive him around. And I'm like, but what did you do all day? Nothing. You know what? Once that money is gone, it's going to be gone. It's going to be gone. And, 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 and who cares? Because obviously she doesn't. Obviously she doesn't, right? So then, you know, she asked him about work. He said he's going to be working part time. And she had a little problem with that time with their financial situation. I was like, excuse you. Excuse you. Your financial situation. You ain't thinking too much about that financial situation the way you spend it. Because, again, just because you got a lump sum of money, a lump, like, and that's my thing with people. When they, you see people who come into a lump sum of money and they be like, they just, you see them spending frivolously. I'm like, you do realize, once again, you have a lump sum of money. You're not going to get another lump sum once that lump sum is gone. It's always smart to put some, like, put some away. Whatever you have in that lump sum, I would say, like, if you get 50, if you get a lot of money, 50, 60,000 dollars, right? Whatever you get. Take some, I wouldn't even say take half. Put a good majority of that into a, a savings account or an account that you don't intend to touch. And you can also take out a, like you can give yourself a small portion be like, "Okay, I'll put maybe 2,000 in my primary checking account and leave and leave it there, right? And and you know, spend but also make sure that you have a way, whatever you spend, make sure that you can replace it. And also when you buy shit, <laughs> make sure that when you buy shit, it's stuff that you could afford before that lump sum. Because if you can afford if you can afford certain things before that lump sum, that means you still can't afford that shit if you ain't if you ain't, you know, working or whatever. Bianca, I, I don't really care about, I want her off of my television screen. That is all I want from that girl is off of my damn TV. Let's move on to the next couple of you guys. Uh, let's talk about Teeny and Rob real quick. So those two are still arguing about her getting the job, him getting that tattoo covered up. Then he walked outside complaining about the trash. I was like, you can take the trash out. Neither here nor there. So, Teenies just said that she was being petty when she brought up the brought up the tattoo. I mean, I'd want that tattoo covered up too, cause that white lady on his on his arm, it would bother me too. It would bother me too. But you know, she apologizes when he came back in for spending the money and not talking to him, and she also apologized for bringing up the tattoo. So we see him as he's getting ready to go meet up with his dad to play basketball. And, you know, we saw him meet his dad. 
He told his dad about Teeny and his mom getting into it with each other. The dad was like, you know, your mom is, is pretty, ooh, excuse me, I, your mom is pretty self-stubborn. I was like, I think we can figure that out, that that lady is stubborn, right? And we also found out that, you know, his dad went to prison, got out of prison, and went back to prison. That is something I, I just, I've said it plenty of times before, is I don't understand people who get out of prison just to go back. Like, I think I've told you guys this before, but. I have an uncle. My uncle was in prison from the time, actually, he might've went to prison after I was born because he has, well, yeah, he went after I was born because I have a cousin. We're a week apart in age. And so yeah, he went to prison after we were born, Some at some point after we were born. But he was in prison from the time we were kids until we became adults, right? And he got out of prison in 2015, I believe, because my grandfather passed, my papa passed away in 2014 on Thanksgiving Day. And then he, because he wasn't out of prison when my papa passed away, but they did bring him home for the funeral. They brought him home. He, he made it to the funeral. He made it there after the funeral was over. Um, so he got out in 2015, right, I believe. And then I believe in 2018, he went He went back to prison. He's back in prison. I can actually look it up. Uh, give me just a second and see how many years my uncle got. Because he went back to prison in 2018 and he's back in prison again. And this time, I don't think bro man is getting out of that prison, unfortunately. Hate that for him, but not really. I mean, he did it to himself. He did it to himself. And he only has himself to blame. Yep, my uncle isn't, he has a, god damn. The maximum sentence for him is 827 of 2082. Mm -hmm. And my uncle is 53 years old. <laughs> He's 53. He is eligible for parole. Oh, he's eligible for parole next year. Will he get it? I sincerely doubt it. Oh yeah, so he went to prison in 92. He went to prison in 92 and he got, like I said, he got out in 2015. And then he went back in, oh, it was 2017. And I didn't find out until 2018. Not that I really cared, but his projected, oh, so his projected release date is 3-2 of 2045. Nigga, you got a long ass time in prison over something so stupid. I know why he went back, but just dumb as the day is long. But his maximum sentence is 2082. And again, like I said, I don't know. You know what? It is what it is. Rob's dad is out of prison. Hopefully he learned, it appears he's learned his lesson. Can't say the same for other people, but it is what it is, right? So, we see as Rob and Teeny are going out on a date night. We found out that Teeny interviewed for a paralegal position. And when they went out to the date, Rob suggested they stop using condoms. I was like, wait a minute. You told her to get a job. Y'all complaining about your finances. Adding a baby is another finance because you got about formula you got to buy clothes. You got to buy a lot of shit when it comes to a baby. But okay, y'all ain't thinking smart. And she's just starting a job. So that maternity leave ain't coming. But okay. I don't think that's smart. I think that's really dumb. But, but hey, y'all live y'all lives and do whatever it is that y'all want to do. It's stupid. Don't do it. Please don't. Please don't do it. But if y'all do it, congratulations. Still think it's dumb. Moving on, you guys. So, 
we move on from them and we will talk about Brittany and Key Rock, you guys. So the episode opens with Brittany and Key Rock. And you guys remember, Brittany has not told Key Rock at this point what the PO said about him, them getting married might not be the smartest decision. So Brittany decides to wait until the moment that they're getting ready to do it. Now, I will say, Brittany, why did you wait to the last minute? Y'all, in, he in his tux, you in your dress, you got a person here ordained to marry y'all. And I'm pretty sure y'all probably paid that man. Or maybe a production paid him since, he, since he's on camera, right? Why would you wait to the last minute, though? Like, I'm with Key right being upset. Like, why would you wait? Like, you should have told him long before now, right? Definitely should have told Key right before we get to this point. So they called off the wedding. But Key Rock is up, like I said, Key Rock is upset with Brittany for not telling him. Rightfully so. So then the next thing we see with them is Key Rock is packing to go to Texas. I think Key Rock should have went to Texas. I mean, shit, if you're trying to make the money for y'all, Brittany, let the man go. That's all I will say about that. Let the man go and make the money. But Brittany says, no, don't go causing a whole entire scene. I was like, girl, this is not, I mean, he was walking away from you to cool his head and here you come in behind him cussing with a camera crew. Girl, no, that ain't smart. And he was worried about, you know, somebody calling the cops. So I can't nobody gonna call the cops. I was like, I beg to differ. I beg to differ. It's a black man with a Hispanic woman. You know what? I, when you look at Key Rock, and I'm going to say this, and I'm not even saying this in a rude or disrespectful way, so I, I want to pick my words correctly. When you look at Key Rock, there is nothing about Key Rock that I get from him that tells me he's trans. Like, when I look at Key Rock, I see a man. Like, I literally see me, like, you know. I don't see anything like, wow. Wow. Like if I were to, you, you know, you just, you just looking at Key Rock, I would have never guessed that Key, I would never, if I were walking on the street and I see Key Rock, I wouldn't guess that Key Rock was a trans man. I really wouldn't, really wouldn't, really, really wouldn't. So Brittany is wanting Key Rock to stay because she's talking about her PO was going to call, you know, call her in a week and possibly say that they can go to Texas together. I was like, OK, girl, if that's what you want to think, then cool. So y'all just the thing with Brittany and Key Rock is they just do irrational things. They do things and don't they're without actually thinking about the outcomes that could come from it. And it's just like that's problematic. That's and then y'all want to get married to each other. And both of y'all are very impulsive. How can you, how can two people that are impulsive be married to each other? That would be a recipe for disaster, if, if, in my personal opinion. Like, I, when it comes to me, I am not impulsive at all. I think everything through. Like, I'd be like, okay, well, I want to do this. But then I think about, well, maybe what if this happens? Or what if, like, I am, I'm somebody who got a plan from front A, B, C and D. I gotta have I gotta make sure I got like I have this plan right here. Well if that plan don't work out then we need to do this. And if that don't work out then I need to do this. And then if that don't work out, we need to do this. And then hell if it and this don't work out shit, we just gonna have to scrap it for right now and and come back to it at a later date. Like that is my personality. I cannot do like I don't know if people I don't know how people like I be sitting when people, because I, I saw people who like do things on a whim. Like I saw somebody, like in 2021 when I was moving out of my last apartment, I actually saw somebody on social media. I think it was on YouTube. I can't remember who the person was, but they moved from one state to another state without a job, and I was like, "Baby, I could never do that. <laughs> I could never." They packed up their car. And I think the person, I forgot where they went, where they moved from, but I know that the person moved to Atlanta. And luckily enough, when they got down there, they were able to find a job and all that kind of stuff, find a job, get an apartment and all that kind of stuff. But 
I thought about that. I was like, ooh, maybe I could pack up my, you know, because I didn't know what I was going to do. I was like, okay, you know, maybe I could pack up my car and pack up all my stuff, go here and, you know, hit the ground running. But then I thought about it. I was like, absolutely not. I can never do that. That just, it just scares me because I, if I don't, if, the unknown scares me. And I think that that's why I can't do that kind of stuff. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. But Key Rock decides that he's going to stay. And that's it for those two. Let's move on, you guys. So who do we have left? So we don't talked about Brittany and Key Rock, right? We just talked about them. We talked about Bianca and Daniel. We talked about Teeny and Rob. So the only people left are Zaria and Troy, Kim and Joey, and Justine and Michael. Let's get to them real quick. Justine and Michael. So Justine and Michael, you guys remember in the last episode that they went to go see the attorney. Michael is still in his feelings about the fact that Justine wants for Kylie to, you know, have the boys, right? I will give Justine a smidge of a point, right? Because, Michael, you did lose your temper when them boys had gotten into it and you punched that hole in the wall. That wasn't a good sight. That wasn't good. So I get her frustrations with that. But I also get his frustrations about not wanting to split the kids up. But then you guys know how I feel about Justine wanting her daughter to raise those kids when she is a young woman just starting her life. You and Michael made this selfish decision to have another baby when y'all should not have had another baby. I know babies are a blessing, but if you have a health risk and girls don't give work, hell, I'm, you know what, Justine, I will say for you, I'm glad you did it at this particular time and not currently, right? Because shit, if you did it now, going into 2025, you might have been F-U-C-K-E-D. Just saying, I don't know what the laws are in in um in vague in Nevada. I think I think it's I I don't know. Don't give me the line. I don't know what the laws are there. Don't really. It ain't got nothing to do with me. At this point, like I said, we wash black people. We washing our hands with certain things. We did our part. We're good. <laughs> so, um, just need to bring up him in the argument. And he said it was too much for him. Well, Michael, if it was too much for you, why don't you just calm down, take a breather, go outside, smoke a cigarette, smoke a blunt, do something, but calm down, cool your head down, come back, have a conversation with the, how you started the conversation was good. It was the fact that you punched a hole in the wall. And I also think I was watching, who was I watching? I think it was Leah from Le um, her channel, Leology. I think I was watching her last week. I think it was Leah who said this, and I agree with it. That Michael, it was, it was somebody I was watching. I can't remember who it was. But somebody said Michael should probably take a class about how to best parent or you know deal with a child who has autism who's on the spectrum i agree with that michael should take a, a course in how to you know handle how to how to better better handle himself in situations like that right so after that um now just need to say that you know with, with her boys that the constant in their lives is she and kylie Okay, that's fine. But I still think that you're wrong for wanting her to be their mother figure. I, I think you're wrong in that regard. So we find out that Michael's mom is going to be coming to stay with them because her house burned down, right? But they haven't told his mom about this pregnancy. I was like, oh, good luck with that one. Hopefully she don't come at you with a pregnancy test. So Justine just wants things to be positive. However, Michael's daughter, Mel, she kind of feels away because she's never kept anything from her grandmother and you know she's just worried about it and they know that the mom is going to be upset so michael went to go pick up his mom and the episode ended with justine standing up so she can see that she's pregnant so we'll see the you know the outcome of that in next week's episode let's go ahead and move on to zaria and troy you guys 
let me ask this question because maybe I'm maybe I'm crazy, right? It could just be me. Zaria and Troy. Just like with Bianca and Daniel. Money issues, right? Bianca went and spent $136 on arts and crafts. At least she got a lump sum of money. Although that lump sum of money is going to be gone before she knows it. But Zaria and Troy... These two went down to a dispensary. I said, I know you fucking lying. A dispensary? Now, I like, you know, I like the Mary Jane as much as the next person, right? Because I got something on my table, right? I got some flour on my table. I got some edibles on my table that I have not. I took one edible and I ain't took one since because, ooh, that was a good high. But I want to, you know, I should have, I should have took one Tuesday. Uh, we're going to take, we're going to probably take one this weekend because I'm still, I'm calming down, but I want to be even calmer. But, um, they went to a dispensary, right? I'm like, so y'all ain't got no money for rent. The business ain't making money. Y'all ain't got no grants for the business, but we going to go buy some weed. Oh, Okay. Y'all got some screwed up, fucked up priorities, because why? So we see them, they got some pre-rolls, they got this and this and that. I was like, again, why are we buying weed with no fucking money? That don't make no damn sense. So they went somewhere, got high. Zaria is talking about, you know, she thanks Troy for adopting her son. I was like, okay, girl, nothing you say or do makes sense either, right? So then she asked him about having another kid. Troy doesn't want to have a child right now because they're not in a good space. I was like, so we buy in, we buy, this week's episode, because the episode was titled Love Bomb, right? It should have been, it should have been titled something different, the, the delusions of these fools you got Bianca out here spending frivolous money and ain't got no job but complaining about Daniel and his job at least he got some income that's gonna be coming in on a regular basis if it ain't weekly bi-weekly if it ain't bi-weekly bi-monthly right so he got money coming in you don't Teeny and Rob Rob wanted Teeny to get a job Teeny got a job now he wants to have a baby Say what now? That's stupid. Now you get to Zaria and Troy. Zaria and Troy ain't got no money. Want to go buy some weed and then want to have a baby. Where's the logic in any? Where is the logic in any of these people's thinking? Everything that y'all are talking about, nothing is logical. The math don't math. Then Zaria says that, you know, she's not on birth control because the birth control was causing her to break out. I was like, is that what you want to say? Is that the lie you want to roll with that the birth control was making you break out? OK, girl, I know birth control probably could make it break out. But girl, that, that one it. That one it. You were irri your skin was irritated because of that fucking makeup that you kept piling on your face. It wasn't the birth control. I just want you to know that. So we see as Troy and um, Azael. They were supposed to be going to a science museum and Miss Karen called talking about they got a problem. I was like, girl, what's the problem? And that was it with them. Now let's wrap up the episode with the dunces. So we back on this train again, right? I'm going back to this whole episode. Everybody was just doing stuff that's stupid as fuck. <laughs> just dumb as hell. Bianca complaining about Daniel working driving him around but you ain't got no job he got a job you spending frivolous money zaria and troy spending money on weed talking about having a baby makes no sense then we got um who else we had teeny and rob teeny want rob teeny, rob want teeny get a job teeny get a job rob want teeny to get pregnant why 
Then Kim and Joey. So, they go to see a lawyer, right? They talk to the lawyer. So, Kim and her ex-husband, they did sign paperwork, so they are legally separated. So, the attorney told her, that's a good thing for you right there, that you guys are legally separated. And that you guys are both um, citizens of North Car of the state of North Carolina, right? So, all they need to do is drop the paperwork, get him the paperwork. Once he gets it, he'll have 30 days to respond to it. After those 30 days, the clock, after he gets the paper, the clock starts ticking, right? So, the attorney also asked her, like, did you guys ever at any point reconcile? Kim says no. But then in Joey's interview, Joey is talking about the fact that Kim is cheated on. So, wait a minute. So, y'all are just habitual cheaters? You, Because she said you cheated on every girl that you've been with. And then you say she's cheated on every man she's been with. Y'all are just some ghetto. Ghetto, ghetto, ghetto. So, then Kim asked the question, if she and Joey buy a house, would her ex be entitled to anything? So, the attorney told her that's a great area, right? Because it would depend on, you know, when they close on the house versus when, also versus once the decree is, um, the divorce decree is finalized, right? But they did tell her that the ex would have to go through a lot of legal hoops to get to, you know, but ultimately they, they don't think he would be able to get the house, right? So then she asked about the paternity of her son. So his name is on a birth certificate. I was like, oh. And so he has parental rights to the son. And if it does come out that Joey is the boy's father, then they'll have to go through a whole lot of legal stuff to get the rights taken, you know, to get the rights taken from him to Joey, right? Then we find out that her ex-husband is paying child support for both of her kids in the amount of $2,500 a month. I was like, oh, Kim, so that's why you've been spending, that's why you spend money like you do. Because I've been so confused. Like, girl, you make $15 an hour. I don't know how many hours a day you work, but you make $15 an hour as a teaching assistant, right? So, so you at least work eight hours a day. At least. At $15 an hour, and I'm pretty sure, now see, I don't know how teaching, teaching assistants get paid because I think teachers get paid, what, monthly i don't know but either way it go i was like i know you ain't making that much money with 15 dollars an hour because when she was talking about that dress that's you know the dress that she bought the stuff for that engagement party and then letting joey just frivolously spend that money for them toys i was like girl the math ain't mathing with this money spending the math ain't mathing and then she said when she said 2500 i was like oh that makes sense that makes sense so you letting this bum Spend up your money for your that you get for your kids. You're you you're dumber than I thought you were. So they told her that all the money that this man has spent, if it does come out that that is not his kid, then we also we know that that child support is gonna get cut in half. So you ain't gonna get that twenty five hundred anymore. Honestly, Mister Man, that's her ex, her soon to be ex husband. If you watching this show, what I would do is I would get down to the courthouse expeditiously, ask for a DNA test for the other son. I want to I want to know that both of them are, if I want to know about both of their paternities. We're going to do a DNA test on both of these kids. We're doing a DNA test on both of them. That one and that one, because she clearly said on television that she cheated on me. Y'all been separated for a year. I don't know how old that other little boy is, but he's still a toddler. Girl, Kim, you are just ghetto as the fuck. And then that woman told him, told them that if he isn't the father, they got to pay him back. I was like, oh, Kim, that's why you, you, that's why you've been worried about this. And you are so stupid to say it on camera. Mm -mm -mm. Girl, you're just as dumb as dumb as dumb. That's the episode, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about it down in the comment section below. Did we get everybody? Brittany and Keyrock, Daniel and Bianca, Justine and Michael, Kim and Joey, Tini and Rob, and Zaria and Zaria. Zaria? Zaria. What is her name? Zaria. Zaru Zaruya. 
God dang, I, I said her name wrong. Zaruya. 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 That's her name. So, yeah, we talked about Zaruya and Troy, Teeny and Rob, Kim and Joey, Justine and Michael, Bianca and Daniel, Brittany and Kira. All right, guys, I'll see you guys in the next one. Um, as always, you guys, stay safe, take care of yourself, wash your hands, be blessed, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.